Hey guys, my name is Wilson. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the six ways to increase traffic, increase revenue, and increase profit for your restaurant on slow days. Yes, we have slow days as well. Yes, I suffer from those Mondays, Tuesdays, the early mornings that people don't come in. I suffer from those like fly squatting days. And unfortunately, that's just part of the business. But that is the wrong attitude. We can always do something about it. And which is the reason why I'm shooting this video to share with you the six ways that we at 720, this ice cream chain that we've created, have used to fill our restaurant and to fill our ice cream shop. And hopefully you're gonna find this video helpful for your journey. And if you do, just, you know what? Smash the like button because it's just gonna help out my YouTube journey a lot. That's the only thing I ask for in creating these free videos for you guys. But nonetheless, let's dive right in. The number one way to fill up your place is to host event in your place. And this is something that is super helpful for us. And I find that it is just, that much better in creating a camaraderie with all the businesses around us and it also exposes us to a lot of different new customers. Now, what do you mean by host event at your place? Usually when we host event at our place, we're not looking to host our own event. We're planning and we're hosting other people to host event at our space because we have a space that we don't use and we don't have customers. So what do we do? We tell people who need space, people like artists, people who has classes, people um, that are running small businesses that would need a space. What we're doing and the strategy behind this is because of the fact that, for example, if we have someone that does calligraphy, okay? Calligraphy, drawing and stuff like that, they love uh, doing this and they wanna be able to teach other people to do that. And they have, let's say, two to 3,000 Instagram followers. They love doing that, yet they don't have a place. They don't wanna teach people how to draw and write calligraphy art at a Starbucks. They don't wanna do that. So we would reach out to this calligraphy artist and we propose to them that, hey, you know what, do you wanna to come to our ice cream place and teach how do you uh, do calligraphy and all this crazy stuff and host a class at our place. And majority of the time, they would really want to do that because it's a free space, why not? And then when they host an event, they would be pro promoting on their own social media. So now we at 720 Suites, our ice cream shop, are exposed to 2,000 to 3,000 other people who are following this calligraphy artist. We, our place is exposed to them. Now that we're exposed to them, now that this calligraphy artist has, let's say 10 to 20 students that are gonna be coming to our place to learn calligraphy, now we can sell to the people that are there um, as well. We can give them a combo price, we can give them something a little bit more special, so then that way they can finally experience our product. And in this format and in this way, we're getting exposed to other demographic and other people, new customers who are gonna be able to come back uh, and return as well. And we find this strategy super helpful in not just filling up our space, but also networking with other professionals, networking with complimentary um, small business owners who are promoting for us now. Now, after the event, what happens is that this calligraphy artist is posting pictures on their Instagram uh, on this event. Majority of the time, they'll be hosting our ice cream, they'll be holding, holding our bubble tea, and in turn, we, our brand is being exposed once again to their followers. And this has been exceptionally successful for us. And that's the reason why we try to host three events every single month. If you wanna be able to fill your place on the slow days, make sure that you guys host events, places where you can find these local artists, local people that complement your business is Facebook groups, meetups. These are the places where people are posting their events and in turn, you can reach out to these individuals and offer them your place. And for you, it's at no cost pretty much because people don't come in, it's a private event, and in turn, you get free advertisements. So why not? The second way in getting more people through your doors on the slow days is to collaborate with other businesses, collaborate with other chefs and other people that have food offerings. And what I mean by that is with 720 Sweets, we have done a collaboration with a gourmet marshmallow producer, Archie Mellows. And with Archie Mellows, what we did was we created a specific special flavor with Archie Mellows having their uh, marshmallow on our ice cream. And in turn, this became an amazing hit product. At the same time, we were retelling their marshmallows at our shop as well. And that brought in a ton of revenue and it bring in a lot of hype as well. 
Why do we want to do that? It is because once again, we're using the same tactic as the first tactic, which is to cross pollinate, to cross promote. Now that we have done a collaboration with them, we're now exposed to a new customer base because we created this new item with them. And in turn, we turned our slow days into very profitable days because we were able to limited launch during these days, these hours, and in turn, jack up our revenue. So a lot of chefs are doing this. A lot of people have been doing pop-up stores as well. So this is another opportunity for you to be able to actually collaborate with other chefs when you do pop-ups. Right? So nonetheless, be creative when you're suggesting these um, structures and these relationships. Think about ways and think outside the box because a lot of times you don't need, there's no box that you need to sit within. You can actually step out of the box. You can actually create something really wild and be creative with this whole process and just try things out. It doesn't really hurt to try things out. On the other hand, it benefits you tremendously if these collaborations do work and on the at, the at the end of the day when your place is slow why not it actually helps out a lot so this is something that we've been doing quite a bit with our brand and i think it has helped us a lot so you would want to give that a try as well so once again cross collaborate with other chefs and other brands as well. Third way to bring in more customers for your restaurant is to back a team. Back a team or back a organization. So for me, I am involved in this multi-sport league and in turn, they have, I would say, 2,000 different members throughout each season. And in turn, because of the fact that we actually back them, we give them promotion and we give them percentages off, they promote to the whole organization. And when they promote to the whole organization, this, these people and these players bring their family to our ice cream shop. And usually every season, what we do is a end of the season party and we tell them to come in for some free ice cream. And in turn, when they come in for some free ice cream, they spread it to their news and they expose our brand to a whole new demographic just because of the fact that we back a team and, a, or, or, and an organization. So within your area, look at different teams that you support, teams that you like or organizations that you are involved in as well and back those players up, back those people up because all you're looking for are exposure. exposure. When you can actually have more exposure, then that really adds into your, your loyal fan base and it actually adds into much more revenue for your restaurant. And the fourth way to bring people through your doors during these slow days is to run promotions. Running promotion has been a long time game, okay? This is how Happy Hour is born. Restaurants realize that from the per period of three to six, that's from the period from lunchtime to dinner time, no one comes to the doors, and which is the reason why they offer incentive half-priced beers, half-priced wings to their customers in an attempt to bring in more customers and it has worked really, really well, which is the reason why we now all understand the concept of happy hour. Nonetheless, for your specific restaurant, create a deal, create an incentive to bring in customers during your dead times, during your slow times, create an incentive to bring them in, whether it be in the beginning of the morning or it could be um, mid afternoon or it could be happy hour, it could be Monday, it could be Tuesday, it doesn't matter when, create incentive to bring people in. For example, this really well known Korean barbecue place, Gyokaku, on Mondays, they offer full day happy hour. Although they're not making as much money, people are still going in to consume. And in turn, when they like the experience, when they like the food, they will come back to consume on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday with their friends and family, and in turn allows the company to profit during those times. Just because you're running a promotion does not mean you should be losing. It just means that it's another attempt, another opportunity for customers to try your product and your service. The fifth way to bring in more customers during the slow days is to host your own event. Previously, we talked about hosting an event for other suppliers, other creatives, other businesses. Right now, I'm telling you to be able to host events on your own. Host events, for example, things like trivia night, things like uh, live jam nights, 
uh, things like sports day, all these different kind of events would bring people in because it's just an added, added extra and added value that they would not get aside from eating at your place. For example, if they really enjoy having live music and if you have someone in to play live music on a Monday night, then yeah, they're gonna come have a beer, have a, have a plate of pasta and enjoy the live music. So nonetheless, if you can host these events on a regular basis on the slower days, this becomes another added reason for your customers to come in and to enjoy your product offer. For example, with my, me and my wife, we really love going to this Indian place, not just because of their food, but because of the fact that they have this live belly dancing performance every Monday night. And we love going there, not just because, like I said, not just because of their food, but because of the belly dance that we get to enjoy and it's super entertaining. And for us, we eat out every day, every night anyways. So. For us, when we get to choose, we're like, hey, you know what? Aside from wanting to eat some Indian food, we also want to be entertained. It became a night out. And on Monday, where else can we go that offers live performance? And that's how this company and this restaurant has won our business. So in your business, think about something that is creative. Think about something that works within your demographic and offer that extra added bonus to your customers and give them that reason to come in on that slow day. The sixth and final way to have more sales during your slow days is to work with professionals. Professionals who have monthly meetings, weekly meetings. We're talking about people who work in the bank, people who work for charities, people who work for different organizations that are in charge of buying catering or hosting different events at different places. So for us at 720 Suites, we got to know the branch manager at the bank right next to us. And in turn, because of the fact that we have a really good relationship, they order from us every single month. They order a big batch of order to thank their customers, to thank their employees as well. Because of the fact that we established this relationship, now we have this monthly revenue that we're able to, um, to count on and to offset those slow days. So in your case, establish these relationships with the professionals around your area, the bankers, um, the mortgage brokers, the charity organization, right? So if you can host a place for them on a slow day and give them a discount, then of course they would wanna come in because they have a pleasant experience. And when you can actually have these relationships these organizations to come in or to cater for them this completely offsets the slow days for you because that has we have found tremendous success in doing this so hopefully this has helped you out uh, be creative with the type of offering that you're offering them whether it be coming in for 20 percent off or coming in for free drinks or catering meals for their meetings these are all very helpful tactics for you to be able to use to offset the slow days that you're going to encounter in your restaurant so there you go, the six ways to increase sales for your restaurant on the slow days. I just talked about all the secrets that we've used. I really hope you find tremendous value in this. The only thing that I ask for is that you smash the like button because it's gonna help me along this whole YouTube journey. Um, that's the only thing I ask for. And if you guys want to learn more about building a restaurant, building an ice cream shop, check out the link below because I've actually created a course for you, a course that I've used um, and actually compiled from the last 10 years of my experience, anywhere from starting, how to start, how to get funding, how do you write your business plan, how do you actually create your menu, to negotiating free rent, having your first client, building an all-star team, um, creating marketing tactics that have people around the block, creating loyal fan base, all these crazy things that I've done and I've been able to accomplish. I created all that condensed it into a course, so check it out in the link below. Otherwise, subscribe along the journey for more free videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next video.